Hey, what's up, everybody? All right, I'm in Gar uh, Gilroy, California, right now. Uh, I'm gonna be deadheading, deadheading down to uh, Castroville, uh, 25 miles from here to pick up my load. It picks up at 1,500. Uh, first, I'm gonna creep over here and get my trailer washed out. I thought he was going in there to get washed or something, then he decided to turn around instead. You have eight hours and zero minutes of remaining drive time. I want to get over in the line for the washout. Okay, I'm gonna run inside and go pay real quick. And we'll get started here. All right, so it's uh, $40 for a washout here. As you see here, they do have a dedicated washout land. I have used this one before and I have uh, We've been here even on a live stream before. Uh, uh, it's a 25 mile trip from here down to Castroville, which is where my pickup will be. And then the load is going to Mount Juliet, Tennessee. Uh, plan is to just pick it up and then run it down to my house tonight. Probably go get my, uh, my haircut or whatever in the morning and get it moving uh, sometime tomorrow. Uh, I think 10 a.m. is as soon as I move, so. Uh, yeah, and then this later this later afternoon pickup did not help me out with planning my, uh, planning to take any uh, time to get the personal stuff taken care of, so. Uh, but we'll see what we can do with it. Uh, let me see what I have for Alright, so it's 25 from here to Ocean Mist. And then. Where's it going? Uh, Mount Juliet, I forget. Aldi, isn't it? Yeah. Aldi and Mount Juliet. So, 2,296 miles. And it's 350 from here to my house, so. 1950, yeah, yeah, it's gonna push me uh, as far as, let's see, well, no, today's the third. It's not due until the eighth. And I can do it in uh, as little as three shifts, I think. Probably need a little bit of a four, I might need a little bit of a fourth, but I could possibly do it in three. Four, five, six. Yeah. Either way, I think I'm gonna have to wait on recaps to to get there, regardless. So, looks like I should be okay. But if, if I leave the fourth, it's, uh, yeah. Uh, all right. So 2,300 miles. Uh, 230 divided by six. That's 38. I'll say about 40 because I have so many miles of California to run. So 40. Plus, I'll need, uh, we'll just plan on three 10 hour breaks. That's 30 hours. Plus, we'll say uh, 1,300 
local or no 1500 1500 Tennessee time because that's where that's when I need to know my ETA that's 85 hours so minus 72 That'll be the 6 to 1300 be my best ETA, adding in the, the loading time, so yeah, actually still looking uh, looking good. I guess I didn't really line up properly with this uh, washout bay. Up. Get my tandems lined up a little bit better. It's, I should be able to get it over there regardless, but I want to get my tandems at least in a little bit better position. Because the way that dump truck that was here earlier was lined up threw me off. Trying to blindside into that spot. Why put yourself through that when there's plenty of space here? I mean, uh, if you go the right, the correct direction through there, you can sight sight in, and there are plenty of other spots open right now. Hope it's not going to get expensive. Alright guys, about ready to roll here. Uh, we'll be able to check in for about another almost hour after I get there. Because uh, my appointment isn't until 1500 and it's barely 1240 at the moment. And it's only going to take me about half an hour to get down there. But I do have a staging area there. I could have even parked overnight there if I wanted to. Uh, but I, I like the idea more of being here. So. Um, that all closed off. Alright, I mean, it, this can at least help make sure I get a couple hours there where I uh, where I can pause my 14. Not like it'll matter though, because only 350 miles to run is not going to be a problem, and the vast majority of it, or, or at least the first half of it, completely is going to be in areas where. We don't really have, uh, won't really have to deal with traffic delays in all likelihood. Just in case there are any traffic delays right over here in Gilroy, which I have seen, uh, it is common here. Or on the way over to Castroville. Oh crap, I didn't know. I can, yeah, it didn't matter. I can turn my uh, reefer on when I get over there. Like I said, I'm going to have an hour of, uh, almost an hour of time before I can check in. Anyway. Okay, 
this guy is having difficulty getting into his a little bit of difficulty getting into his spot and it's mainly because he's trying to point the trailer straight into the hole instead of out in front of it like I always preach I mean he's got lots of room there at least on the blind side but he's trying to avoid yeah, he's, he's trying to make a uh, error on the side of staying on the staying closer to the guy on his sight side and a lot of that has to do with uh, he's coming in there at a bad angle. Yeah, now see he's way off on uh, his tantrums are way over. He's gonna have to pull forward, I know for sure. Uh, let him reset first. This is good. other side of the scale like that guy did. Didn't expect, uh, expect Hoosier to take so damn long to get into a spot. It's a wide lane, it's a wide spot that he's going into. It should have been easy. Southbound, so I need to make a right right here, cross over to the other side, and then hang a left. What? Let me wrap close the head. Are you kidding me? Would have liked to know that earlier. no choice here because this is a truck restricted uh, place right the uh, road that I'm on yeah this is a uh, yeah this will do this will work here it's only the left lane or for traffic coming off of uh, that side of Monterey there's plenty of room here for me to do a safe u-turn and I can still get on the southbound side from this other, from the other direction.
need to do some research because a friend of mine, shut up, a friend of, a friend of mine, you, yeah, some of you guys might know him too, uh, Daniel Finney. Uh, he's all, he's actually up here making a delivery in Moss Landing. And I think he's going to do a 34 after he's done, and I told him about that truck stop. And he might end up going, uh, I think he's going to go up there to do his 34. speed a little bit faster. I normally wake him, make him wait, but him being a truck and I know he doesn't have the capability to accelerate like a regular car can or slow down so easily either. And a little bit of professional courtesy can be important there. Okay, it looks like we are going to have some kind of delay at the, looks like maybe at the top of the the hill, why does it always seem to be like that there? I don't know. Uh, right where 156 comes in from the east. Okay, yeah, that's 156. Castroville before, but never actually uh, went to any customers there. Uh, I did get a, my trailer washed out there once. And it might be right down the street from where I'm picking up from, too. I tried looking on the satellite view, and don't think I really saw the place that I was at, but it looked very similar. And the street that uh, the street that I saw there in front of the, the Shipper Commercial Boulevard or whatever, and it's a, basically a circle. Um, that sounds familiar. pretty soon on 129. I know Daniel was wanting to know about that route, if it's truck legal. I don't know, but I'm going to look specifically for that detail as I'm passing by it. Maybe uh, maybe I can get that information. It looks like it's doable for trucks. I know for sure 150 or wait. Now 152 going up from uh, Watsonville over to Gilroy is not truck legal though. We got a lot of hilly, twisty curves on the way up there. Okay, so road construction next 35 miles that could have something to do with why there's a traffic delay up here. Daniel will come from if he, uh, if he comes up this way from Moss Landing.
Back to Mail RV Park. truck stop there in Gilroy, they have a, yeah, it's a decent sub shop there. I like it better than Subway. I don't know I'd call it anything special, but it's definitely better than Subway subs. Anza Trail uh, follows 129. Okay, I didn't know that. And the Anza Trail is uh, it's a long trail uh, that, what was it, one Juan, uh, Juan de Anza, I can't remember the middle name there. Went up from Mexico up to uh, up here, I think. Up here somewhere, I forget. Yeah, it is a truck route. I didn't even see a truck route sign right there. Okay. So I will let Daniel know when it's appropriate and safe to do so. Better yet, I can want to let him know real quick. picking the load up and start pulling across 40 sometime tomorrow. Alright, sounds good. Alright, see ya. That's all this bog down is, is slow down for this merging traffic? That can't be right. No, because it's, uh, I see more orange, I see more orange up ahead, so it's got to be construction related or something.
between the truck behind me and myself, I was trying to accelerate hard to create another big enough opening for him since he was a little bit further back behind me. That was one of those cases where the, the hood mirror was the, the best tool I had to see him. I, I could look further over the right and possibly see him in my convex mirror, but the hood mirror, I can, I definitely have the best perspective of what's going on over there, more than one lane over from me on the, on either side. Particularly on the blind side like that, though. That's why, that's why those hood mirrors are a godsend to me. I don't think I'd ever want to drive a truck without hood mirrors, just because that they're so, they're so useful. Okay, then we're going to probably have some more slowing coming up. Yeah, I think right after this right curve, going into the next left. So I want to prepare myself just in case. This is where I like to have the map up. That way there are traffic issues like that. I'll know in advance that I'm about to come up on something not always necessarily sure what it'll be, but just be a good advance warning that something might be there. And sure enough, right about where it shows on the map, we're starting to actually physically see the slowing too. Look too bad here though. It's uh, a little bit bright orange around this next curve, and then it gets to a lighter orange, which means that it speeds back up a little bit, but not to full speed. But then it'll get green again, which before I get to my cutoff. Well, uh, it's one the highway 156. understanding clearly enough why it's even slow here at all. This is just a lot of merged traffic earlier and heavy enough traffic already on the on the highway that uh, just take yeah, it's just too much of a bottleneck that hasn't cleared up yet. It'd be residual in other words. Uh, basically where the volume coming out of the area is the same or less than what's coming in until the until it reverses where the volume coming into the bottleneck is lower than the volume coming out uh, that bottleneck's going to stay there even if uh, even if whatever might have been causing it is already cleared up very common question that people ask but why the hell is it even slow down there not even an accident or anything going on here well that's why Something, uh, something happened earlier to slow it down, whether it's just merging traffic or an accident or uh, construction or something, disabled vehicle, who knows. Anything along that line could cause a, it to slow down though. Yeah, I'll have to stop a pilot, I think, anyway, to, at least to, to get fuel or, I don't know, I might...
Because let's put some thought into it. People don't just slow down to that kind of speed for no good reason. Something causes them to do that, and then, then when they're, uh, you know, when they want to speed back up, now there's so much volume of traffic behind them that it, it just, it stays like that. The line will, the, the length of the bottleneck will get longer and longer if the volume of traffic continues to exceed the volume of traffic that can get can get through the, get on the other side of the bottleneck, but then it'll stay about the same length if, uh, if, the, uh, if the volumes going in and out are equal, and then the bottleneck will go away if it's uh, thinner coming into the bottleneck than it is going out. This hill is probably uh, heavy trucks trying to climb the hill might have been contributors to this. You know, maybe trucks trying to pass other trucks. There are only two lanes here, so you get a truck like myself who's empty right now, and can I can I can uh, go full speed up this hill if I wanted, to, if I could, versus a slower truck that can that can slow down the fast lane. Or if you get a, let's say a moderately heavy truck trying to pass a heavier truck, you know, he's still, and it'll cause even more delays in the, in the left lane. And I, I'm, I'll be willing to bet that that's what this uh, slowdown here is from. Again, just too much, too much volume of traffic here coming in. And trucks can't pass other trucks because without causing it. Yeah, because there's no extra lane to work with. Still, we'll have our, our turn over to 156. is at our, uh, at our, as I call it, the mothership, our home terminal. And I guess he saw John Christner there today. He says uh, John is recovering well from his uh, bad accident, bad uh, motorcycle accident he was in uh, last year. So that's good to know. I didn't know he was as close to dying in that accident as he was until uh, his grandson, uh, John Wayne was telling me about it when I was at the yard, uh, I think it was back in January or, I don't know, or earlier. I don't know, it could have been January, I don't know. But I ran into John Wayne. That's, okay, so our, our organization, you know, or you know, our chain of command, whatever, ultimately, uh, now John, you know, or his, yeah, some call him Papa John or Mr. Christner. Uh, he's retired now, and he left the, he's basically left the company uh, to his sons, Danny and Daryl, to run. So Danny is our CEO, and Daryl is our CFO. 
the Danny's son John Wayne is also um, yeah in the in the chain of command there and yeah he's a good guy yeah I I, I, I BS with him uh, whenever I'm over at the yard he's younger. He's, he's very approachable. Actually, all of them, I think, can be. I, I know I... I'm not going to lie. I, 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 with Danny, I don't know. Um, I kind of get him. Because I only met him in person once. I've seen him uh, in person a couple other times when I was over at the yard just chit-chatting with one of the planners. Uh, I need to move over because this is my exit coming up. I know Danny is a uh, very pro driver though, uh, he, he cares a lot about uh, what's important to drivers, uh, you know, he still has a business to run though, so some people might disagree with me on that, but, uh, 156 westbound here, but I, from uh, anecdotal tales from other drivers, I can tell he actually gets a crap about drivers. drivers you have a problem with them I might just want to consider uh, you might be the kind of driver he doesn't want around but if you're a pain in the ass I wouldn't want you around either if it was my company hey no call a spade a spade it's uh, or what I don't I guess they say it I Uh, just a known fact that some drivers are very self-centered and only care about themselves and they don't care about what's equitable to both sides. I mean, even look at uh, team sports. We just had the NFL draft this last week. A lot of trading goes on there. Uh, actually, the Eagles even made a trade. Actually, a couple of trades involved there. One to the Dolphins that went uh, dropped their number one pick from number six to twelve and then they then the later on during the draft week traded with uh, the Dallas Cowboys their number twelve pick for the number ten pick. It's not you know so there's give and take going on there. It's gotta be something that benefits both teams in some way. And the same thing should happen here with uh, with respect to trucking business, you have your business to run, and it's driving your truck, but you have to give and take. You can't just take, 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 and expect that, oh, that's all about me. No, if it's all about you, get, get GTFO. You don't need to be here. So anyway, it's, I know there are anecdotal stories about how, how pro, uh, how much Danny uh, is pro driver, on, uh, and, and I, I honestly believe that. I just don't know, on a personal level, I don't really know him. I met him one time in the elevator on the way to a quarterly meeting uh, downtown in Tulsa last year, when my DM invited me to attend with her, and um, I don't know, I just didn't get the vibes like, like we had the, the greatest chemistry or something, I don't know. I mean, or maybe he just was busy, had things on his mind. I don't, I don't want to judge him. And just because he may, may or may not have some kind of issue with me that I don't know about, he, uh, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna label him an asshole or anything like that because I might be misreading the situation there too. But I do know he's got an open door policy, and I mean, you can go in the planning office there. I look right into his office, it's him, and even uh, if he's not busy, uh, walk right in there and chit chat with him about stuff. Yeah, I just, I've just never taken the time to do that. I think there, there were a couple times I intended to go in there and say hi, whatever, and introduce myself, but uh, you know, like when I'd go there, he wasn't, he would not even be there. Maybe he was out of uh, out of town or something. Who knows? Or 
I'd look in there while I'm talking to somebody else and he's busy, so I'm like, yeah, I don't, yeah, I don't want to disrupt. I'm sure he's a busy guy, so. be the most social with people until I, I know for sure that there's some kind of chemistry there between us, like uh, there's a mutual uh, you know, respect for each other, I guess. Uh, that's the best way I can describe that. I don't know, I've ever even seen Daryl Christner before. I know what he looks like, but... think of any times where I've actually ever personally seen him. Okay, we'll have an exit coming up. I think yeah, I should be able to use it. Because um, that, that exit there is technically not truck legal. Or at least north of the exit. But I think um, I might be able to use it going southbound. got to watch for the signs here to see if it, uh, if it says no trucks for the whole exit or if it just says no trucks northbound. But I know, it, I know for a fact it's truck restricted northbound from the, from 156. Yeah, this truck's getting off here too, so it might be alright. other trucks here in the area too, like, well, they're, at least I thought I we did a minute ago. Yeah, I don't actually see signs over here saying no trucks allowed on the northbound side. But I have, no, actually, yeah, I have been through this exit before. This is, yeah, I have to use this. Are you trying to get that pickup's attention for something? Yeah, I want to say that road that I'm going to turn on from here is, uh, I'm pretty sure it's right down the street from the place I got washed out at. Turn on the Blackie Road. Should be right uh, just shortly after the 76 station, which I see right up ahead. I know that street name on that loop that I saw on the map is looks very familiar. Coastline Family Farms, Romaine Hearts. Yeah, I think there'll be a set of railroad tracks too. Yeah, yeah. side of the road, uh, on the other side of the train tracks.
believe it's going to be a left turn onto this street right over here. Where are we? No, I think the next driveway. Shipping office and truck entrance. here in the staging area. See at least one open spot I think right there. Another one here. Yeah there's plenty of room here. Okay there'll be a blind side into one of these spots here. Actually, 40, a little over 40 minutes early for check-in. Assuming that it's a one hour before appointment time check-in. Oh yeah, there's outhouses right over there, so if I need to use the restroom, I can easily just use that. Okay, so we'll get checked in uh, about 40 minutes from now, and then when it's time to dock in, we'll have some more footage for you. Alright guys, got a uh, dock door assignment, uh, door 14. That's going to be straight back, it looks like we're close to one. Alright, let's do... I think I can actually yard move just fine. Uh, I don't think it'll affect my 12, my 14. I'm gonna keep waiting forever for every damn truck to go by before I can pull out. Some of these guys are probably looking for spots to park in anyway. And I'm sledding doors open.
there's a ton of space here. further down. Dude, are you seriously going to block the whole freaking lane to open your doors? See, I could be going around him by now. He's not, I don't think there's enough room for him to open his doors until he's already, uh, before, you know, he'll have to open his doors before he gets between those trucks. And now he's going to be in my way doing it. Maybe he just wants to get lined up first and then then once he's completely lined up he'll probably come all the way back out. when you're somewhere else. Fuck. Moron. You could be, uh, he could be a little bit further back there and at least out of people's way. This is where people just have no concept of consideration or courtesy for other drivers. Freaking idiot. Alright, well, it's 15 uh, 15s right now. Um, so about 15 minutes after my appointment time, I did call them right uh, a little bit after 2 o'clock and they, I was able to get all uh, checked in, but they said they would definitely not call me until closer to my appointment time, so, uh, this was to be expected. It's uh, not bad at all, it just, uh, so now we'll see how long it takes to get loaded. Uh, we'll have some, uh, we'll have the final footage going from here to, uh, probably the pilot in, uh, Salinas. Now, uh, really, I don't think there's a scale here on site. If there is, I'm not aware of it. Or, well, actually, yes, there is. The gate right here in front of me says ca uh, scale, cash or credit card accepted, $10. Um, okay. Uh, all right, so take that guy's activities there as a lesson. Don't slide your fucking tandems when you're blocking the damn uh, lane. And don't open your doors when you're blocking the lane either. At least uh, yeah, open them up and slide or whatever, you know. At least get your doors open if you have to have them open before you get behind, uh, past other trucks, before you start blocking the, the lane that people use. 
it's okay to block a few trucks here that are actually sitting in dock doors because there's a chance they're not leaving anyway but don't sit there and block the entire lane so other trucks trying to uh, go by uh, can't uh, can't do so and with, i already had my tandems all the way back before i even went around him so uh, actually uh, i had to have more space to work with to get around him because of that and I'm sitting here burning yard move time, so that's another thing that irritates me. Yeah, I would have just as soon used personal conveyance if, or, or something if I'd known that. So, have some damn courtesy and respect for other drivers, you guys. Alright, so we'll have some more out of We'll finish up the footage here when I get through loading, and we're going to head down to the pilot in Salinas, and that'll be the end of the video. Okay, so stay tuned for more. guys I'm done loading here um, not, a, not that heavy a load only 33,000 pounds so four, and we got 15.99 on the corner and I need to get a seal keep forgetting I got a vinyl more soon too Urgently low on seals yet, but I'm definitely getting there. Okay, recommended setting 34 to 36, and I need to see where JCT wants it at. 34 continuous. Okay, so we'll get this on here. Alright, so I'm gonna, uh, I need to get some air going into this. Because uh, this trailer tends to lose air when the tandems are, or when the trailer brakes are set. People don't even think, man. This, uh, I was walking back to the truck. This uh, straight van trying to dock in right, right next to me. And this guy goes wild. This guy in the door next to me on the left goes uh, walking almost right into the van's path. This guy looks like he's waiting on me. Looks like. It's all on the. Let's see, is there a room over there? No. Doesn't look like there's a shoulder I can park on, so. I'll come over here. I'll slide my tandems over here and then I can get spun around. Uh, slide tandems, get my load locks installed, all that kind of crap. So at least want to be out of this guy's way who uh, 
Evidently, it's going to dock into the door I was just in. You have eight hours and zero minutes of remaining drive time. tend to help when he pulled the plunger. straight down straight down uh, 183 or whatever I think this highway is 183 uh, straight from there down to Salinas
couple of trucks there in the left turn lane, but they have two lanes to work with for their turn. But still as a courtesy and just in case they get stupid, well there are two turn lanes there too, so. We won't even have to worry about the trucks, it'll be the cars that are more of a concern. And them I don't really care about, they can go around me the way they're supposed to, as far as I'm concerned. But it looks like I might get the green light before they do anyway. Nope, maybe not. Alright, looks like fuel prices are... You have seven are, hours and 57 minutes of remaining drive time. Looks like fuel prices are back up about two cents a gallon this week. At least for diesel. somebody not paying attention. That or they were tailgating and uh, going out, driving too close to the other person. But my money will be on the not paying attention part. Doesn't necessarily mean they were distracted driving, but I mean, they could have been in like La La Land or something, daydreaming or who knows what else. Oh yeah. We can all make assumptions that a phone might have been involved, but that's not always the case. Uh, it looks like there are some traffic issues down here in Salinas. 